So what I wish to tell you, I wish to tell you something that you probably have seen many times and you never noticed this. Here in Istanbul, there is a church. This is the Greek church, Patriarchal Church. It is just close here. When you are walking uh, from the center of the town to this place, you are passing this church. And it was some time ago when I went to this church and I found there is something that is really interesting for all of us here. This is the church. It looks like this. When you're passing the road, you can enter there. You can see quite a few things. Uh, you will find there are very, very old icons. And you will find there is something that was interesting for me, something like this. It is a box. It is standing inside of the church. When I saw it first time, I didn't really notice very much what is this. It looks quite interesting, uh, but there is no inscription, there is absolutely nothing, no information about this. So I started talking to the people in the church, what is this? And they were able to tell me, oh, this is a candle box. You know, in Greek churches, there is a big box usually, or a table, where people are coming, they put a candle, they burn it, and there are so many candles on this. In this box, there was no candles, there was glass in the front, uh, so you see reflections on the top of the uh, screen. You see the red reflections. These are the candles that were standing somewhere else. And the box looks like this. So I couldn't get any more information in the church. No one was able to tell me anything. So finally, I went home and I started writing to these people. You have website and you have contact address on the website. So I started writing, asking questions. And finally, I got response. The response was exactly like this. The box is the candle stand made of walnut and in light with ivory petals in the shape of pet pentagons. The 17th century candle stand in the Patriarchal Church is a replica of early Egyptian art. I didn't buy this. I got this news, fine. I read this, but what was for me strange? First, I didn't like the word pentagons, because here you can find pentagons, but you can find also many other shapes. So not only pentagons. But then another thing that was really puzzling for me, it was the early Egyptian replica of early Egyptian design. Come on, what this means early Egyptian, okay? Is this ancient Egypt? No, definitely. They had geometric patterns, but they were quite simple. So this last sentence is a total nonsense, was a total nonsense for me. So I had at least one information that was quite valid, the 17th century. So this was putting me in the right place in the time. But I started looking through the books. I have quite good collection of books related to geometric patterns. I couldn't find anything from Egypt reminding me this. Finally, I have a book, Burgoyne. And Burgoyne was living in Egypt for some time and he was copying, copying, copying whatever he could find. And in this book, in precisely the last page, there is a pattern slightly similar to this one. Slightly. Not very much, exactly, not exactly the same, but at least similar. So I started getting impression, fine, well, maybe this is really a replica of something from Egypt. But of course, not so early as I could uh, expect. But then I found article a paper about the Burgoyne book, and I found information. Burgoyne probably saw this pattern somewhere outside of Egypt because there's definitely no pattern like this in Egypt. Okay, 
And so I knew that something here is really wrong, and this last sentence is not really true. Then in another letter from a Greek person, I, found, I got translation of this text. You see, with this text, I was also asking so many Greeks what this means. And they were telling me, listen, we cannot read this. This is old Greek characters. And in the old Greek, they were using shortcuts. So you don't have really here full words. You have just parts of the words. But somebody was able to translate me uh, this thing in such a way. Manuel, son of Peter from Castoria, Greece, donated uh, this book in the year 1669. So I have precise date. And then when you are looking on this, uh, you can find these words. For example, on the top, it is written Manuelos, old Greek characters. Uh, then you have from here Petros. So now I can recognize at least part of this, and I know the age, 1669. So the box was done probably around this time, and what was this time? This was the time when in Istanbul, the, uh, the Blue Mosque was built. It was built about 50 years before this. And it was the top of the inlaid art. So this was the time when such things were produced in, in Istanbul. And of course, when you are walking through the Istanbul in many places, you will see things very similar to this one. So definitely, I know. This was done in Istanbul in one of the woodworking uh, master's uh, places here. And this is not Egyptian replica, but this is something that is related to the art in Istanbul. Much later, I was in Konya, I was in Karatay Madrasa, and I saw there are patterns that are similar to this one. So we are here, and this is Seljuk art. This is definitely, for me, a Seljuk art. Now, the pattern itself, when you are looking at it in the beginning, doesn't give you much hint. You can say a few things about this, but not very much. First of all, you can say, fine. If I cut this pattern into four pieces, one line here, another line like this, then you get four pieces that are almost identical. There are no mirror reflections in this. These pieces are similar, but not identical. But you can treat these things as a mirror symmetries. Then you have the big rosette, and Jean-Marc was showing us something similar today. Then you have four pieces of this rosette in the corners. So in order to restore this pattern, in order to understand this pattern, you need really one quarter of this pattern, not much. So I will be trying to go through this. Now, if you remember what Jean-Marc was telling you today, morning, uh, today in the first lecture, here you can identify some shapes. Look at these red shapes. These are decagons. And the pattern inside of each of them is identical. What this really means? You see, the things like this were never built on the sky. They had precise dimensions, precise size. Okay? Designer who was planning this thing definitely had size of the box and he had to make a pattern like this. Uh, so, when you look at these decagons, if you know the height of this pattern, you can precisely, very precisely calculate uh, the size of the decagons. And you have these decagons located in such a way. How many of them you have here? 
if you start counting them. Uh, here, in the center, you have 10 of them. Okay. Then you have 7 on left side, 7 on right side. Totally, you have 24. And here comes something that is rather puzzling, but maybe not. You see, when you are in Greek church, in the Greek church you have iconostas. You know what is iconostas. These are usually four rows of icons. And in one of the rows, which is called daisies, there is Christ in the middle, and there are 12 apostles. Then, on the next row, or below, there are prophets and some kind of saints. And usually these are also 12. So, this what you see here, in my interpretation, I may be mistaken by, or not, but in my interpretation, this is symbolism of the Greek Orthodox Church. Jesus Christ in the middle, and then you have 24 shapes symbolizing apostles and signs from the Greek church. Okay, let's go further. If you look at this, then definitely you see this empty shape. If you try to organize it some way, you can feel it. But how you can feel it? You can feel it in a way like this. You can feel it in a way like this. Every of these shapes is a kind of rhombus. I didn't have any names for this, so I started using my names. Uh, so this one I call ruby because it reminds me of the ruby from my grandma necklace. Okay, so that is a ruby for me. Then this one. I call diamond. These are like diamonds, okay? For this reason, I use the blue color for this. And then, now, look what you are having at the, in this moment. The logic of this design is like this. You have to start filling the rest. This is the shape that is waiting to be filled. That is the shape that is waiting to be filled, okay? So, I have my rubies, I have my diamonds. I am just filling this with another shape like this, and I, this shape I call emerald. Okay? If we have jewelry, then we can have jewelry. Okay? So the green shapes I call emeralds, and finally uh, the left space here I call citrines. They remind me of uh, lemon. Okay? Uh, so you are getting a puzzle looks like this. Polygons, 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 and everything is based on the Kagon. Now, when we are looking at this, we have these two places. You see, in these two places, we should have two rubies, but they will be overlapping. So, designer couldn't put the rubies here. Maybe he didn't want to put them. That's a different part of the story. So, this part has to be organized in a different way. And I am just showing here how this part was organized by him. So, we have again five diamonds forming a kind of star. And then we have these shapes. And here there's something left between the blue and the green shapes. So, Again, one thing is missing, and we can add this thing, okay? Uh, so, this design, when you start filling it to, do, to the end, okay, I will just go back. You see what you have to do. You have to fill this space, and the rest is just obvious because the, these are the shapes that you know. So, you're getting something like this. And here comes another puzzling uh, thing. The whole design in the top and in the top and in the bottom has a shape like this. On the top I am showing how this space can be filled without adding this shape. Okay? 
it can be organized like this and it's fine. No, he used this shape, which is a new one, not existing before, and for some reason he used it on the top, on the bottom, on the left side also. Okay? Why? If we do some calculations in this thing, then what we have here? We have 24 rubies, 24 citrines. This is the reason probably why he introduced this shape because he wanted to have, probably, he wanted to have 24 citrines. We have 12 stars built out of diamonds. This, these are the numbers that you get from the Greek church. This is a typical approach in the Greek church. Iconostas, four rows, okay? Four rows and Christ in the middle. So you have 24 icons, then you have 24 another icons and so on. In some of the Greek churches, there are more than four rows in the, in the Iconostas. So the numbers fit perfectly. Is this true? I don't know. No one confirmed that this, my interpretation is correct or not. But calculations are showing just this. Okay, now when we know this, this is the geometric structure of this candle box. For me, it looks like this. This is simply a tessellation. As a mathematician, I prefer to use the word tessellation. And this is the tessellation with convex objects. These polygons are convex. Only this one is not convex, but you can cut it in half. Okay. So this is tessellation with convex polygons. This is the tessellation so-called edge to edge. It means if you have two polygons, they touching along the whole edge. Okay, so this is a typical mathematical interpretation of this. And of course you have the whole geometry. You can think how, to, how this thing is done. Jean-Marc was showing these things, okay. You can calculate the angles in the decagon and now the shapes. How these shapes are created. For the diamond, the thing is simple. You're taking decagon. You're just drawing these two di di diagonals. Then you're making arc. You're getting this point parallel to the base. And you have the diamond. So this geometry is simple. For the citrine, this is precisely the same. You're drawing this diagonal. You're taking arc just to have this and this segment equal. And then you're drawing parallel. Again, this one and this segment must be equal. You're getting uh, the citrine. Other shapes, emerald looks like this. And amethyst, I call this last amethyst, is like this. But this is really part of the ruby. Okay? You can forget about ruby at all. You can just use this shape and you can build your ruby out of uh, these things. How to con construct patterns on this? So when you think about construction pattern on the ruby, I said the amethyst is a part of the ruby. Uh, so how this thing was done? It is a very simple geometry like in the primary school almost. Okay? This is how looks the construction of the ruby. What is really important? It is really important that these angles here and these angles are in such a way that this pattern will fit the pattern on the next uh, polygon. Uh, so if you put, this is the ruby, how it was constructed without this, okay? And if you put here the ruby, and if you put the diamonds around, they have to fit. This line must be straight line. This line must be straight line. So the pattern is passing from one tile 
to the another tile without breaking, changing direction. Okay? So if you forget about the backgrounds, it will look like straight line. Uh, so this fits perfectly fine. Then with the emerald, the story is practically the same. You're taking your emerald, okay, and what you do, I just, I just put these two diamonds just to show how these things fit, okay, and then I built emerald inside of this thing. Look at this. What you're getting here, this line must continue here, here, this line must continue here, and here you will be getting a very nice pentagon, a very regular pentagon. Also here, this angle here, and this angle here, and this one, they must be the same. So for this reason, it is very easy to const construct this thing. So it looks like this. Then you have citrines. Citrines, construction of citrines is a really simple one. Just like this. You're catching centers of each side. Here you're just joining the centers, and there are you joining. Then you're joining these centers like this, and finally you're building from this point line that is vertical, perpendicular to this one, and from the other one perpendicular. You get the shape of the pattern. Okay, this is what we get out of this. So the emerald construction of emerald is. Uh, quite simple in this case and you can build a pattern just using only emeralds look at this they fit perfectly they form pentagons here all over okay they will fit also with other patterns chrysolite this is the most difficult part okay uh, but listen in fact, here you have quite a lot of freedom. Designing this object, you have quite a lot of freedom. If you wish to reconstruct exactly this, what you have on the candle box, you have to go this way. But if you wish to make something new, that's up to you. What is the most important? This part must be like this. What you put inside, this is really up to you. You can, you can put there flowers, you can put angels there, you can put whatever you want. Just remember, this thing must look like this. So if you put here another shape, it must fit to it. Okay? And there are not many shapes that you really fit into this. Oh, look at this. This line must continue like here. This line must continue. This is the only requirement, really, for the central rosette. Now, if the petals of the rosette are par parallel or not, this is really up to you. You can make them slant anyway. Okay? So the central part is giving you quite a lot of freedom. Okay. And now we have the whole geometry. And here we have to look at this geometry. Uh, from, let's say, designing point of view. There are some strange things in this geometry. What is strange? First of all, if you look at this, each shape is cut by the edge of the ornament along its symmetry line. So here you're getting a long symmetry line, here a long symmetry line, here you're getting a long symmetry line. But there are places which are wrong. Which one? This one here and the blue ones here. Okay? This is what normally doesn't happen. In many ornaments that we have seen, such situation doesn't occur very frequently. But we have to understand one thing. This ornament was produced on a limited space. And this is the only way, probably the only way, of organizing all these shapes so everything will fit properly. But otherwise, it is very regular. 
When you're looking at the box, box is giving you impression this is terribly chaotic design. No, it's not chaotic. This design is really regular. Look at this, for example. This shape like this, you're getting here. You have here the decagon and this, I am, not, I am not sure how to call them, goose hands, are precisely around of this. Even the central part is really very regular. But this part here, it was difficult part. Why? Because you have to fit to the symmetry line. Okay, and you cannot mess up this part. Symmetry line must be symmetry line. The same is with the vertical. Here you have very nice symmetry line. For geometry, it works perfectly fine. For the pattern, it's a bit worse. Uh, so, when we go further, we can fill this pattern with, we can fill this geometry with our pattern. It looks like this. If we forget about the backgrounds, if we forget about the backgrounds, we'll be getting something like this. No more backgrounds, but still it looks like a jewel box. Uh, so now we can do what? We can just forget about colors, and if you forget about colors, you get the real pattern that you will see, that you have seen in the box. It looks like this. So this is the final pattern. And for the people who are coming to the church, it is something curious, uh, but no one is really trying to recognize what is this. But then, if you go to Konya, if you see the Karate Madrasa, then you see similar situation. In the Karate Madrasa, you have see, you see, you have see rosettes like this. This is not the same one. Because this rosette has something that wasn't there. But for example, here you see the shape like this. This is what was the blue star made out of uh, diamonds. Uh, then what else you have there? Uh, yes, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, uh, you have here it. So you can, you can take this pattern and you can analyze, analyze it precisely the same way. The only trouble that you will have with this pattern is around this rosette. So what you have to do, you have to do some adjustments. And these adjustments are really simple. For example, citrine. You remember citrine. It was shaped long like this. You have to cut it. And you have to cut it precisely uh, when the line is just going down. If you cut it there, it will be fine. Another shape, it was the filling shape. The strange shape that was somewhere down. I was, so, I was telling that I was asking questions why. If you take this shape, if you cut it, if you take only half of this, then you're getting precisely everything. This here, this is from the citrine, part of the citrine. It was, okay, where it is? It was cut like this, okay? And then next to it, this is the pattern that was filling uh, down and up. It is just half of this, nothing else. In around this world, you can find quite a lot of patterns especially in the Seljuk country, uh, which are very similar to this one, which are built with the similar logic. And in my last workshop or lecture uh, that will be in Amasya, I'm going to show you, I'm going to look at a few patterns and just give you opportunity to build them on your own. Uh, so you will be making them, and you will see how simple is this task. Okay, I think this is all from me. Thank you.
Any questions? About the first sample, the box, yeah. in compare with this mosaic panel, I want to say something which I saw in your photos, which the first one, as I, based on my experiment, is the combination of the uh, vertical layers of wood, which work as the frames. And these frames make the structure of this um, surface. At least it's, uh, if we can go to the photo, I can say something which maybe it's, uh, it shows what is my idea about this works. Because I, if you saw from backside of these panels, you will see how is the structure of these panels. How they make this, or, how, or, or it's better maybe I say how they collect this, which way they, they start from the central form, which is one star. Then they collect with a hook parts of wood with this structure, which this is the line one, and collect around this another, comp uh, another form, uh, another combination of the pentagon or whatever, polygons. And then again, they make a bigger structure which is supposed to support the weight of the thing which they put on this wall. So, we have a central form which has a, which, which have a structure and it's continuously this structure goes around to the surface which it is in the center. Then they collect with uh, pushing the hook around this, another form, and they collect this. As you analyze with other colors, it's very, very visual when, when you, if is it possible, show your analyze with the red color, it's, uh, completely shows how they, how, yeah, exactly. Later, it's much more clear how they work. So at first, they make this central uh, cent a star. Then they collect this uh, red uh, polygons around that. And later, they, have, they fill all the empty space between, this, between these polygons and make other structure. If you look at this, we have lots of uh, vertical line which is supposed to support this uh, structure to, uh, to support the weights of things which they want to put at this. And these are the structure which work as the frames. From backside, uh, completely it is visible if you s look at inside the box. And this small piece is, is the panels which goes inside these frames which, which build this surface, which make this surface. So, uh, it is very logical what you say, which this is related to the mathematics, to the geometry, which makes such a structure as a piece of uh, wooden work, mosaic wooden work. But in another one, which is ceramic wooden work, because it's not, uh, uh, not necessary to support a weight or something, it is only a surface which cladding or making mosaic with, with this technique. Uh, the line is not necessary to continuously work, uh, uh, continuously goes around the frames and around the pattern, the pattern panels, I mean, and uh, maybe some of the lines is cut in some place, but what you saw again is the parallel line which uh, defines the frame and a structure of the design, not as the structure to carry the weight. And then inside that they use the method, the old method of mosaic making, which is much more similar with today method for making the zelich. Zelich is kind of mosaic which, which nowadays in Morocco they produce, and it's the traditional way I mean, which today we speak about that, which they produce this without paper and without uh, drawing. So in that uh, work which we saw in Cunha, they make some parallel lines. And then, uh, row by row, row by row, or pillar by pillar, they fill inside this parallel line. So it means they have not any uh, drawing or pattern with that, so they cut some modules of ceramics and put inside this parallel line. And that is the structure of the designing. This one is the structure, engineer structure, or aesthetic structure, as I would. That is aesthetic, aesthetic structure, this is and it's very logical with, uh, with uh, mathematics which you explain for this. 
and co it's Fermi is very cons is considerable in this mathematic which how it's work just it always we have two points of view one point of view this is designer point of view and the other point of view this is the point of view of the person who is doing this in reality and these two things not necessarily must be identical uh, so for example when you are talking about making it of course they were making it out of the tiles that look uh, like the small shapes here okay they completely ignored the lines that I was putting the lines of geometry this is from the designer point of view but the person who was carving this he was using the shapes that we have here okay so for example for the person who was doing this physically this line didn't really exist for him existed this shape and he had to put it for him existed this shape and he had to put it so these are two points of view that we sometimes are mixing to mixing together we are looking at the result and we are thinking okay they were designing it this way how the result looks uh, sorry it's not always true you see I told in the beginning today that I spent quite a lot of time, really a lot of time, going to the Russian literature. Russian archaeologists were doing a research in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan was a Russian Republic, and people from Tashkent were traveling around, and they were capturing from the woodworking masters scrolls, the scrolls that we know there is one in Istanbul and then there's another one in the museum in UK. Russians were taking, they were really confiscating these scrolls. They confiscated quite a number of such scrolls in Bukhara, for example. And they were doing this research on the base of these scrolls. Rempel, Pugachenkova and Buatov they made quite a few papers, quite a few books showing how was working the geometry of the Uzbek designers. So they use this logic, the logic of polygons. 